So in talking about the internet, it's useful to have a definition or two different definitions of what the internet is. If you're a user of the internet, you tend to think about the whole experience as being the internet. I'm using the web, I'm sending email, I'm doing instant messaging. But if you're an engineer building the internet, we make a strong distinction between the internet and the applications that run on top of it. The internet at its simplest is just a mechanism for moving data from one point to another. You put the data in one side, it comes out over here. That's all the internet is. We break the data into packets, we put addresses on the front, we forward them through these little computers called routers, and everything else, the applications, run on top of the internet. Now, why am I making this distinction? The distinction is important for a couple of reasons. The most obvious one is different parties are responsible for building the different parts. Internet service providers give you packet carriage. Application designers give you the applications. The platform of the internet was designed to serve the needs of two constituencies, if you will. One is the users, you and me, sitting at our computer. But the other, of course, is the application designers. If the internet is not suitable for running the web, then we don't have the web. So what is the core characteristic of the internet when I talk about this packet delivery service? It's generality. Our goal was to let you implement any kind of application. Now, we, we were sort of hedging a little bit there. Um, we've had some trouble with applications that have tight real-time requirements like voice, but there's some implications of generality that are very important to understand. One of them is, of course, that the internet doesn't know what you're doing. You can run any application you want, and all it does is forward the packets. Now, why does this matter? Well, one of the issues is, of course, security. Since the internet doesn't know what you're doing, it can't distinguish between good behavior and bad behavior. And in fact, the consequence of any general platform is it cannot prevent bad behavior. It's like saying, I want a highway that can tolerate any kind of car except a getaway car. No, you can't do that. So a consequence of generality is the platform itself cannot prevent bad behavior. Bad behavior arises and therefore has to be controlled inside the applications. But now we come to policymakers. We come to people in Washington or other seats of government who say, I want a secure internet. Well, what are they actually saying? You don't quite know how to answer that question until you've made this distinction. Because if we put strong tools, for example, for identity into the internet platform, then identity would always be done the same way. There'd be no anonymous behavior. Either we'd all be known to our government or we'd never been known to our government. That's probably a bad social contract. So there's a very strong interface, a very strong definition between the internet as this data carriage platform and the applications on top. What are the implications of that? When we started designing the internet, we thought those were technical implications. What we later figured out was we were defining the structure of the industry. Standards modularize the industry, not just the software. So internet service providers are not in the application business. They'd love to be in the application business. They could make more money that way. But they are in the packet carriage business, and other companies, Facebook, Google, companies like that, are in the application business. And of course, the generality of the platform, the idea that the internet was supposed to be able to support any kind of application, means we haven't optimized it for anyone. We didn't optimize it for the web. We didn't optimize it for voice. We didn't optimize it for video. So all those powerful application people say, but it's not perfect. And the answer is no, it's not perfect. It's merely general. So did we do a good job of supporting the applications? What we gave them was generality. And we said, that's enough. If you can do anything you want, what else could I give you? Well, there are actually three things we could have given you that we didn't understand at the time. One is tools. The second is guidance. And the third is protection. What do I mean by tools? Well, there's some things you might like to have that aren't inside your application, but they're not inside the packet layer either. I mentioned identity is something which I think would be a very bad idea if it were in the packet layer. On the other hand, it's not clear that you want to manage identity from scratch in every application. So maybe we need some app identity services. And one application could have a choice of using this identity service or that identity service. What do I mean by guidance? Well, we didn't provide any descriptions, any design patterns for how an application could be built. Since we didn't have any control over it, we figured, well, they'll do it any way they want. 
But in fact, we've learned a lot about how to build applications that perform well, applications that have good security, and we should be giving guidance to application designers as to how that can be done. The third thing I mentioned was protection. I can't keep an application from behaving poorly if that's what it wants to do, or badly, or maliciously. But perhaps if the network knew a little bit more about what the application was doing, it could prevent behaviors that the application didn't want. We could protect the application from being misused. We could protect one application from another. Now, this is a very daring statement, given the architecture of the internet. We were absolutely convinced that the network should not know anything about the applications. And there was a very important reason for this. If, in order to build an application, you had to tell the routers about the application, the routers had to know what you were doing, then the internet service provider could keep you from running an application by saying, no, I won't let you do that. We didn't want to empower the application, we didn't want to empower the internet service providers to block applications. But this creates a real problem for users today. The internet's wonderful when it works, but when it doesn't work, it's terrible. You can't figure out why. You go to a web page and nothing happens. What do you do? Who do you call? People call their internet service provider all the time today when they can't get the web to work, when their email doesn't work, when they can't download a movie. But the internet service provider is not responsible for any of that. If you contrast it with the telephone system, where the engineers of the telephone system understood that it had a purpose, and that was to carry phone calls. If the phone call didn't get through, the telephone system could tell. But if you're a router in the middle of the internet, well, I forwarded every packet I've gotten, that's all I know. And if the application is screwed up and isn't sending the packets, the router can't tell there's anything wrong. So there's a very interesting design decision for the future, which I think is sort of a fork in the road. Do we evolve the internet so that it knows more about what the applications are doing, which means perhaps we can help the user when they don't work, perhaps we can give them better performance, perhaps we can protect them from malicious intrusion. On the other hand, m would we accidentally empower the internet service providers to exercise a much higher level of discrimination about what you can do? Would we inhibit innovation? These, I think, are the key questions that we are thinking about with the internet going forward today. I like to think about the future of the internet in terms of design alternatives. And design alternatives give different priorities to uh, different issues such as performance and security. The way the internet works today, we decided that the fundamental characteristic should be it moves a packet from one place in the network to another place in the network. There's an alternative view, which is that the way the network should be designed is it retrieves a piece of information wherever that piece of information may be, back to a destination that requests it. This has been called information-centric networking. So instead of saying, I want to connect to your computer, I'd say, I want today's newspaper. I want today's New York Times or today's Wall Street Journal or whatever. And no matter where it's stored in the network, the network would find it and deliver it to you. It makes it much easier to deliver content efficiently. Perhaps it gives different actors different degrees of control over censorship. There are all kinds of consequences of making these kind of choices. But information-centric networking is a, a very popular idea in the research community today. Another challenge we're dealing with today is the emergence of mobile devices. More and more of what people are doing on the internet today is done from handheld devices, done from devices on the move. We understood early in the design of the internet that there were going to be wireless networks, but we didn't understand how to think through all the implications. And we're spending a lot of time now thinking about how to really make the internet ubiquitous and how to deal with all this, this wireless technology. And of course, that relates to the question of what's the most efficient way and effective way to deliver internet in the developing world, where I think mobility, or at least wireless connectivity, is turning out to be the the predominant paradigm, and that affects the kind of applications you can run and what they look like. It turns out that it's going to affect the cost structure of deployment. So mobility and wireless may be very important for the developing world, but it's also important uh, in terms of the changing user experience in the, in the developed world as well. <laughs>